tie up a real popular fly today, this is a stimulator. This is a Kaufman pattern that I'm not certain when he created it. Uh, ever since I've been fishing since the 80s, I think it's been around definitely since the 90s, but it's a very, very popular attractor pattern. There are tons of videos and articles on tying stimulators, so I'm not even going to attempt to say that this is the basic way stimulators are tied. There's just a bunch of them. It is such a versatile pattern and so so easy to tie and fun. It's actually a lot of fun to tie these once you get the hang of them. But this has all the basic pieces and parts of a stimulator and it's tied in as a terrestrial pattern or a, a searcher pattern, a tractor pattern. Just a great fly to have in your box if you're wanting to float some big bulky dry flies to trout and or warm water species. That's a stimulator and I'll get started tying. I'm going to start the stimulator here with my hook and the vise. This is a TMC 200R in a size 8. And it's just a curved caddis hook. There are other, other manufacturers that make them as well. And some people don't even tie them on the curved hooks. They just rather tie them on a straight hook. I, I kind of like the overall profile of it curved. I'll go ahead and debarb the hook. And I'm attached my thread. I'm using a UTC 70 denier and brown for this. There's some deer hair that we're going to compress on this. So I want a thread that's stout enough to, it doesn't have to really flare it and everything, but it needs to be stout enough that it's not going to break. I'm going to start off by bringing my thread all the way down to the point of the hook excuse me, the bent and the, the barb of the hook. I'll get that straight one of these days. And then I'm going to bring my thread back up to the end of the abdomen section. The stimulator is basically divided into two sections. There's a thorax section up here and an abdomen section back here. And I'm gonna come back here not quite to the end. That's where I'm going to tie in my tail. Tail. I'm using some deer hair. This is deer body hair. And it's just a natural color for this. A lot of people like to use elk or they like to use a dyed hair. It's up to you. Like I said, there are just tons of articles and videos and things on tying the stimulator. It's such a versatile searcher pattern that people have just done it in all kinds of different ways. This is just a very, very basic stimulator. I'm going to clean the under fur out of all that deer hair and I'm going to stack it. The tail is not a huge clump of deer hair. It's just a it's just a sparse clump. It's just a sparse clump of hair. I get that all stacked in the stacker and pull that out. And the reason that my thread is up here, because that's where I'm going to start tying in this deer hair. I don't want it to flare a huge amount down here at the end. So basically, I'm going to uh, attach it here and really tie it in tight and then work my way down with tight wraps starting, but then looser and looser. So it's just collected at the end of the tail. So I want the tips of that to go just a little bit past the bend of the hook. It's not a huge tail or anything, just a little bit past it. I can see where that's going to end up. My tie-in point is going to be right there off my fingers. I'm going to trim the excess here. And that will go up into the end of 
the abdomen and into the thorax space a little bit, but that's fine. If I had my thread sitting up here, I couldn't grab all these butt ends to tie them in. So that's why I left it back a little bit. I'm going to collect those down in a couple of wraps and then pull that tight. It'll flare that out, but then I can wrap all that down right at the end of the abdomen. Like I said, now I'm working my way down, collecting it to the hook shank, but not in super tight wraps. I'm collecting it so that it just gets together right there at the barb for the tail, and it just flares a little bit, just like that. Careful not to get too much, uh, get that too tight there. Uh, there is a rib on this, and I'm using a Danville gold rib and a fine wire for the rib on this. The rib is simply to reinforce the hackle. It is not necessarily to add weight. You certainly wouldn't want to weight, weight this. It is a dry fly after all. And then I'm going to tie in my hackle. And the hackle on this, I'm using a just a ginger grizzly dry fly hackle. I've selected one where the barbs on this are going to just come to the length of the gap of the hook. Understanding I'm going to have some dubbing on this. So when I selected this and I ran this around the hook shank to take a look at it, I actually wanted a little bit shy of the gap of the hook because with this deer hair along the hook shank and a little dubbing on it, it's going to add a the increase the diameter here and push those barbs out to about the right length. I'm also going to, on the end here, I'm going to prep this. I'm going to trim away the barbs right at the very end, leaving just a few nubs there as an anchor. And then I'm going to peel away these other barbs from both sides that are right above that. That way, when I tie this in, I have these barbs right here to help anchor it, but I have a space here where there are no uh, barbs. And then that way, when it does start to wrap in, I'll have the barbs be nice and perpendicular to the body. If I were to just tie the end of that in, I would end up with some of these barbs down here trapped and pointing backwards in the tail. Yeah, it's it's up to you. Um, it really, it's going to get lost in the tail, so it's probably not that big of a deal, but that's just how I do it. Now, for the abdomen, I'm going to use on this one a Antron dubbing. This is just some Wopsy Antron dubbing, and I'm going to use a Ginger dubbing in the back. This is a lighter ginger hackle, so I'm going to use a lighter ginger dubbing. The front portion will be a little bit darker. I don't need a big, bulky, bushy body, so I'm going to control that by just having a thin dubbing noodle, maybe three or four inches. That's fairly sparse. Wrap that on. And as I said, it, it's just going to cover that up. I don't need this to be real thick. By the way, your abdomen does take about two-thirds of the length of the hook shank. And the thorax is about a third. Get this covered up. I'm going to put in just a little bit more right at the end. I don't really want that taper down there. You'll see why in a second when we put the wing in and then the abdomen. So I'm just going to add just a little bit more right there. Just like that. Okay. Now I'm going to apply the hackle, and then the rib. 
But this, on the hackle, I'm going to actually come my way. I'm going to counter wrap this. The stimulator is a fairly heavily hackled fly. So I'm going to get one wrap right at the back. And then I'll probably put anywhere from five to six, maybe even seven wraps along the body. Like I said, it's a fairly heavily hackled fly. This is a big bushy searcher pattern, hence the name the stimulator. And it has lots that keeps it afloat. All of these hackles sitting in the surface film. Trim away that excess hackle. Now I can take the rib and I can weave this through a little bit more open so that it covers, I should say crosses over the rachis of that feather and helps to protect it. So I'm not necessarily, if I got six wraps of the hackle in there, I'm gonna put maybe five wraps of the wire. Secure that. And I can fatigue that wire off. I'm not going to be too concerned about this if I have a few hackles kind of sticking out in odd directions because this is a very heavily hackled fly and it's very, very bushy in the end. So the wing goes in now using the same natural deer hair. I'm going to get a larger clump for this, maybe about twice as thick as the tail. Usually I will cut out maybe even more than that. This is probably about half a pencil, three quarters of a pencil in diameter, because I can always take a few hairs out to thin the wing down. It's kind of a pain to, if you don't have enough, cut some more, restack it and everything else. So just get a little bit more. We'll comb out the short fibers and the under fur. Put that in my stacker. Bang it on my desk. That's one thing I'll, just a quick tip. A lot of people when they're stacking their hair and their stacker like this, they do this kind of thing. And if you're doing this kind of thing right here, what you're really doing is just shaking it up inside. The whole point is that you're smacking this down on the table or some solid surface so that all those hairs get forced down. If you're doing this kind of thing, they're forcing them down and back up. So you want to just have deliberate strikes on your, on your tying table. I generally would edit all of these bang this banging out, but this is a good opportunity just to give you a little tip on working with deer hair. So all of those are evened up. Certainly evened up enough. I'm going to tie this in. There is a little bit of a natural curve to these hairs, so if I can incorporate that, I'm going to curve that downward. But I like to have the ta the wings go to the base of the tail, just kind of off the end of the abdomen. Again, I'm going to see where my tie-in spot is, and I'm going to actually advance my thread forward about halfway in the thorax space here, because I'm going to use some of this for an underbody to kind of bulk that area up. So I get that measured. I see where my tie-in spot is. Just like the tail, I'm going to cut that a little bit long past my tie-in spot so that it just is just behind the head space here, but I have plenty for me to grab. This I just want to flare. I do not want to spin this. See, now I can get all of those butt ends wrapped in really nice and secure, holding these in my left hand nice and tight so that they stay on top. I'm going to advance my thread down a little bit. It looks like I'm going to flare that out, but I'm going to use some dubbing to help that here in a second. 
So I'm almost right up against the abdomen there. And see, I've kind of flared all that out. But that's okay, because I'm going to use the, the dubbing body to kind of collect this and then hold it back down at an angle like that. So for the hackle up front, you don't have to do this. You can, again, look at some of the other patterns, find one you like, and, and go with those instructions, or just use the materials that you have. But I like to do these a little bit different colors in the front and the back. Never know in the lighting conditions what the fish are going to see and key in on. So I'm going to go with a darker antron. This is just a chocolate colored, a brown colored antron for the thorax. And I'm going to use a darker, this is a nice brown whiting dry fly hackle. So it just darkens it up just a little bit. So again, I'm going to take my feather here and I'm going to prep this. I'm going to stroke some of those, maybe about, you know, anywhere a quarter inch, three eighths of an inch. Trim away an eighth of an inch on the bottom, just leaving some of those as a, an anchor. And then also pull off the barbs right above those. So once again, I have my anchor here to tie in. But I have the exposed rachis so that when I wrap these in, they are all coming out nice and perpendicular. So again, going with a not so bushy, buggy dubbing on this. I'm just going to put about a three inch, because this is a little shorter space, about a three inch dubbing noodle on here. And this is where I'm going to collect all of the hair right here. And I again, I did not wrap the thread quite as far back onto the abdomen as I wanted because I'm now going to use that dubbing going backwards like this, and it's going to put in about three wraps there to collect that deer hair together and get it pointing backwards more. You could put a little bit more in there. It's up to you. Again, this is, you know, this is your searcher pattern. This is big bushy profile on this. And now I will Continue to taper that down towards the head. Nice sparse dubbing noodle here to bring this on down. A little bit more dubbing. Don't want to crowd the eye of the hook on this. My hackle is going to then go in, and this again is also going to go in pretty heavy. So I'll probably get five to six wraps, maybe even seven right up in this area. I like to have the hackles be a little bit longer than the gap of the hook. It's going to help support the front just a little bit more. And I like to be very, very heavy on the hackles here so that it has lots of support. After anchoring that in, I'll trim that away, sweep all of this back, and I'll put in just a few turns to kind of bind any of those barbs backwards and put in a whip finish. Possibly could have gotten another wrap of that hackle in right around the eye of the hook. You're going to trap in some hackles often on this, just by the nature of it. That's fine. I don't think it hurts if you just leave them there, but you can trim those out just to clean that up a little bit. Get those barbs all fluffed back out. Some 
head cement on this and that is our completed stimulator. And as I said, take a look at different patterns because some people put rubber legs in. You can put some flashaboo up underneath the, the wings if you want. There's just a ton of different patterns. I mean, this is such a versatile fly. And once you get to tying these, they actually go by pretty quick. So that is a basic stimulator. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for joining me at Device today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong. Thank you.